YouTube family, what's going on? It's your man Pristine, back with another video. Here before you, I've got the OnePlus 12. Yes, it is my pleasure to unbox it for you in typical Pristine fashion. Let's go. Now, I'm pretty excited about this device because it's been a few years, you know, since I've invested in, um, in a OnePlus device. Um, I'm very intrigued by the OnePlus Open. Um, and so I'm going to have that here pretty soon and I'll be doing my review on that, you know, even though it's been out for a little while. Um, foldables is just, it's, it's really my thing. Um, the main reason why I was excited about the 12, because it seems as though OnePlus is starting to get back to their typical flagship killer type ways. And that ladies and gentlemen was what got them their claim to fame. You know, I mean, uh, the days of yesteryear, you know, when OnePlus was still trying to, you know, establish themselves, they were known for being the company to produce extremely premium flagship devices that can easily compare with a lot of the top flagships of those times for fractions of the cost. And they were majorly undercutting the competition in cost. And so it seems like once they got their footing, once they started making a little money, you know what I mean? Then it just seems like they just started getting a little big headed, to be honest. That's just how it felt to me. You know, it felt like they started getting big headed. It, start, it felt like they started smelling themselves and was like, OK, hey, we're one plus. We're here now. We're established. So now just, see, you know, it seemed like each year that they dropped a new device, the price went up and up and up and up and up to where now you know it's like a lot of the oneplus devices you know price wise was consistent with a lot of the other top tier flagship thousand dollars you know 899 799 whatever whatever and to me they just became another option right and then if you look at some of the things that they didn't have like wireless charging and stuff like that you know not to say that they were bad devices but it was just like, you know, if you were to spend a tad bit more, it was, you know, you were you were sure to get everything that a, that a typical flagship of that price of that price tier should have. Right. But now. This year with the 12, I mean, you know, they've got two variants, they've got the 12 here and then they got the 12 R that I believe is going to be coming next week on the 13th today being uh, Wednesday the 7th which is the day after the device came out it dropped yesterday street release date on February 6th which I picked it up from my local Best Buy so this is the fully unlocked version um, but uh, you know they released this a week after Samsung's S24 series launch and uh, yeah I got my S24 Ultra right here you guys I'm pretty sure you've seen the uh, the pristine unboxing if you haven't checked that out um, But you know oneplus is trying to make a statement they're like, okay, Samsung, you know, we see you know <laughs> You released your s24 series, but not even a week later. We're gonna release our product and it's gonna be just as good as your ultra series and it's gonna be hundreds less hundreds less and so I'm like, okay, OnePlus, okay. You know, just, just when I was getting ready to write them off, or actually not just getting ready to write, I've written them off. I was just like, they are just another, you know, high-end, you know, phone option, you know, screw them, <laughs> you know? And then they come back with this and I'm like, okay, this is, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. All right. So. You know, enough of me, you know, rambling about, you know, my history, you know, with OnePlus. Um, let's let's you know, now you guys know my sentiments, where I'm at with them, why they haven't been really featured on my channel these last couple of years, at least. Um, here we are. All right. Let's do this thing now. Like I mentioned, the phone was released yesterday, February 6th, 2024. Um, if you pre-ordered this device, they had some pretty comparable deals. Uh, like Samsung did with the pre-order. So you could pre-order this on OnePlus.com. They had a really sweet deal going on. Matter of fact, I think that deal is still going on where if you 
You can trade in any phone, any condition, and get $100 off either this, which makes this $699 because the starting price for this device is $799, or you can get $100 off of the OnePlus 12R, which I believe the regular price for that is $499, getting it for $399. So if you're interested in either the 12 here or the 12R, I highly suggest that you get on over to OnePlus's website. Any phone, any condition, doesn't matter. That is insane. Guarante and, it's, and it's an instant credit. So you just plug in the phone that you're trading in, boom, it's an instant $100 off the price tag. It's not one of those things where you have to buy the phone at full price and then once OnePlus receives the trade-in phone and inspects it and makes sure that it is what you said it is, then boom, they'll send you like $100 back. No, it is an instant $100 credit, okay? That is a super sweet deal. I mean, this phone at $799 is a bargain, but at $699, oh goodness gracious. That 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 is that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I if I was Samsung, I wouldn't like that too much. I wouldn't like that too much because this phone goes toe to toe with the big bad ultra here. Um but um We've got three uh, gigabyte variants of this device. We've got the 256 gig variant, 12 gigs of RAM for 799. Okay, now again, if you pre order this device, you also get the 512 gig. Okay, so you get the storage upgrade for the pre order for the same price as the 256 gig variant, which is 799, which is what this is. So since I did a pre order through Best Buy, I got the 512 gig for 799. Okay, now the regular prices are $799 for the 256 gig, 12 gig of RAM variant, $899.99 for the 512, 16 gig of RAM variant, which is what this is. And those are the only two variants that you can get in the States. Those are the international variants. Now, if you decide to get the Chinese model, you can get a one terabyte variant with 24 gigs of RAM. And in that one, you could also get that one in a white color, which looks super dope. I really wish that white color was here in the States. Here in the States, the only colors that you get is flowy emerald, which is what this is. It's like a like a like a forest green color. Um, and silky black, which is like a like a real dark grayish black kind of vibe to it, you know. Um, but this green goes hard in the paint. And I was like, yeah, let me get that green. But uh, yeah, so those are the price variations. But I mean, getting the 512 gig variant with 16 gigs of RAM for $699 for trading in a phone and getting the instant $100 credit, that is just, <laughs> that is insane. All right, so what does the $699 or $799 get you? All right, I'm so glad you asked. All right, it's gonna get you a 6.82 3168 by 1440 Quad HD Plus Pro XDR LTPO 120 Hertz display. Okay. We've got an 18.8 by 9 aspect ratio, dynamic refresh rate of 1 to 120 Hertz. So basically, depending on what you're doing, you know, the phone, it just has like variable ref uh, refresh rate up to 120. Okay, we've got a 510 PPI pixel density. We've got Dolby Vision. The peak brightness on this device is 1600 nits. Okay, now that's pretty bright. Now, the maximum brightness, 4500 nits. 4500 nits maximum brightness. That is insane. You should have no problem viewing this device under any circumstance. Extreme sunlight, extreme lighting, anything that could obscure your vision, 4,500 nits should take care of that real fast. Real fast. If you can't see this display with 4,500 nits activated, you need to make an appointment with your optometrist ASAP.
okay? So max brightness, I repeat, 4,500 nits. 4,500 nits. That is hella bright. All right? Now, for the cover glass, we've got Corning Gorilla Glass Victus 2. Okay, now, the internal specifications, the guts. We've got the Snapdragon by Qualcomm, of course, 8 Gen 3 4 nanometer 5G chipset. Okay, this is the 512 gig of storage variant, 16 gig of RAM, no memory slot for, for, for memory expansion. Okay, we've got a cryo um, octa-core CPU. We've got a 750 Adreno GPU running Android 14 with Oxygen OS 14 internationally running on top. Okay, now uh, in China, the Chinese variant, you're running Color OS 14, which Color OS and Oxygen OS are very similar. I think that Color OS just has, you know, some subtle differences, but not not very many. Um, very very similar user interfaces. Okay. Now, for the cameras, on the rear of this device, we've got a triple camera setup. We've got a 50 megapixel wide primary lens. This is a Sony LYT808 sensor. Okay, we've got a 64 megapixel periscope telephoto lens featuring three time optical zoom and three times in sensor zoom, featuring optical image stabilization, electronic image stabilization. Um, yeah, this this camera has got all the things. OK, now the third and final camera is a 48 megapixel Sony IMX 581 ultra wide sensor with 114 degree field of view. Wish the field of view was 120, but I'm not going to complain too much. Um, just have had devices where that was the field of view on the ultra wide. And so, you know, 114, like it's cool. Like you can get, you know, more subjects in the shot. But I mean, you can get more subjects in the shot if it was 120, <laughs> you know, but I'm not going to nitpick and not going to complain. Just happy about the fact that there is an ultra wide sensor on there, because, you know, when you got a family, kids, you know, you're taking group photos and stuff like that. Having that wide angle lens is is good. Or if you're just trying to capture capture more of a landscape in a photo, it's good to have that feature. OK. Um, so again, uh, let's see, 114 degree field of view. We have a macro mode at 3.5 centimeters. And um, the recording capabilities is 8K at 24 FPS. We got 4K at 30 or 60 FPS, 1080p at 30 or 60 FPS, 720 at 30 or 60 FPS, Dolby Vision HDR, ultra steady video at 1080p at 60 FPS, and then we have pro mode in 4K 30 and digital zoom by 18 times. So you can zoom in with this camera pretty far from a distance, kind of similar to what you can do on the ultra here. All right, now the selfie camera is a 32 megapixel Sony IMX 615 shooter. We've got an f2.4 aperture. This is a 90 degree field of view featuring electronic image stabilization with fixed focus, not autofocus. Um, and we can record with 4K 30 FPS with the front camera, 1080p at 30 FPS, and 720p at 30 FPS with the front camera. Okay. Now, the battery, we've got a 5,400 milliamp hour non-removable battery. Now, if you look at this box, ladies and gentlemen, you know what comes in this bad boy. Okay? You know what comes in it. All right? Now, we have an 80 watt charging brick that comes in this device. OnePlus is claiming, and I believe it wholeheartedly, that you can charge this device from 0 to 100 in 30 minutes. 30 minutes, zero to 100, okay? We also now have a wireless charging capability on a OnePlus device, all right? 50 watts, 50 watt wireless charging. 
OnePlus is claiming that you can charge from zero to 155 minutes. That's faster than some other devices with a wired connection plugged in. Okay. Now there's a specific charger that you have to get by OnePlus in order to be able to, you know, get those, those fast wireless charging speeds. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the price on that is, uh, but I will have more information about that during the full pristine review. So make sure that you are tuned in and subscribed for that. Okay. Now we do have also reverse wireless charging at 10 Watts. That's, you know, if you, if your watch is dying and you just need to, you know, not necessarily top it up, but give it a little bit more juice. If you've got some one plus one plus earbuds or something like that, or ear up earbuds, uh, uh, earbuds, not earbuds, um, or Bluetooth headphones that need to be charged. You can set them on the back of the device and they'll give them a little bit of a charge to give you some, 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 some staying power with your Bluetooth. So you can, you know, listen to your music or podcast or, you know, watch your shows, you know, you know, however you rock out, you know what I mean? We do have that capability now on the OnePlus 12. All right. Now the dimensions, the height of this device is 164.3 millimeters. The width is 75.8 millimeters. Thickness is 9.15 millimeter and weight is 220 grams. As I mentioned, the colors, flowy emerald, silky black, additional features, Bluetooth 5.4, NFC. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an IR blaster back in the building. I'm like, man, I was so upset when they got rid of IR blasters some years ago, and it's good to see that phones are bringing them back. So yes, we have an IR blaster here. We have Dolby Atmos noise cancellation. We've got dual nano SIM slots, under the display fingerprint sensor, dual stereo speakers, always on display. I mean, just a slew of camera features and functions that I'll be here all night reading that stuff to you. But if you guys want the full breakdown, go to oneplus.com, click on the OnePlus 12 and click on specs. And it'll just give you a complete rundown of all the camera specs, features, functions, everything that this device does in the camera department and every other little detail about this device that you may want to know that I may have missed. All right. So that ladies and gentlemen is what your hard on cash is going to get you. Um, you know, if you decide to commit to the OnePlus 12. All right. So again, you know, it's very rare that we see boxes like this nowadays in 2024. Um, but I think that, uh, you know, Google, Apple, Samsung, uh, you know, uh, y'all need to take some notes because uh, giving us charging breaks is definitely a thing. Um, I was watching Flossie Carter's review of this device earlier today, and he said even Sony, it's been some years since I bought a Sony device as well, but he said, Sony, they're not even putting the charging cable in the box. So you don't get, you're paying all that money for them Sony devices and you're not even getting the cable. I mean, you know, you're not getting the charging brick, but you at least expect to get the cable. He said, they're not even putting the cable in the box. I'm like, man, that is... <laughs> That is just highway robbery right there. Cause them Sony devices, I mean, them joints cost 13, 1400. That's insane. All right. Now, also I was hoping too, with the thickness of the box that we would get a case. And I saw somebody's unboxing. It was like a short that they did. And there was a case in the box. It turns out that that is only for the Chinese variant. So if you order the Chinese variant, you will get a case in the box. But if you're getting it in, you know, North America, you know, that unfortunately you, you got to buy a case. So again, that would have been nice to get all the accessories in the box, but Hey, it is what it is. When you open up the box, you get a nice little thank you note right here. If you guys can see that. Okay, see it in the glare. All right, never settle. And I never do, you know. So let's see here. All right, very nice presentation. Red is my absolute favorite color, so I'm loving the red theme, the red and black. I mean, red, red is my favorite color, but my favorite color combination is red and black. I've got so much red and black 
stuff, clothes, man, just it's just insane. All right, we got the welcome card here, okay? Signed by Pete, the founder of OnePlus. All right, we've got the quick start guide. We've got the safety guide. Uh, you got some troll stickers here, never settle. So, you know, your partners that got iPhones, you know where to stick that sticker. Okay, oh, okay, we got a red cable club card. Okay, okay, it all started with the first red cable. If powered anything that it was connected to and bound a group of dreamers and pioneers to create the most enthusiastic and driven community in the world, a community now privy to the most exclusive benefit rewards. Okay, red cable club, I like that. Red and black, man, that's hard right there. I'm gonna look into that. Scan the code below to claim your welcome benefits. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. A little QR code right there. All right, all right, OnePlus. I see you, membership card, okay. All right, here we got our SIM ejection tool right there. And this is our little adapter right here to you know transfer data, okay? So it's good to get that in the BizOx. All right, now let's get to the featured attraction here. The OnePlus 12, ladies and gentlemen. Oh man. Oh man, man, wow, and this feels really good in the hand, ladies and gents, goodness gracious, look at that, look at the curves on that, uh, ooh, ain't she sexy, uh, she got some curvature, I like that, I like that, see, people are making a big deal about the ultra and how it has that flat display and see i feel like i'm I, nothing wrong with that but i feel like i'm more of a fan of the waterfall displays or the displays that kind of curve uh, are around the left and the right side of the device man i ah man i'm a really i'm a, I'm a big fan of that and we see we got that big hasselblad camera right there yeah okay Okay, now we got some juice. Go ahead and power it on. Okay, I was about to say, come on now, OnePlus. All right. So, file that to the side real quick. And I think we got something else in the box here. Uh, got a little tab here that we can pull up. All right, that's weird. I can't get a fingernail up underneath that. Okay, there we go. Ah. Ladies and gents, the 80 watt charging brick. Yeah. You see that? It's 2024, ladies and gents. One plus is Showing them what showing them what it is. Red cable. Alright. USB A to USB C. Alright. 80 watts. Right here. That's what I'm talking about. Alright. So let's just push all this other stuff to the side. And let's get to the device. Hello, OnePlus 12. Okay. So, quick hardware tour here. All right. Again, 6.8 inches corner to corner. On the right side of the device, we've got an antenna line, uh, power, and sleep button right here. And then we've got the volume rocker up and down right here, right above the power button. Okay. Sitting at the top of the device, we've got an antenna line right there, noise canceling mic. There's our IR blaster right there. Okay. We've got, I think that's a speaker grill right there. The the the, the top speaker grill. Uh I think because we have a slit right there for the earpiece. And I know a lot of times that is like the top speaker. 
I'm gonna have to test that. We do have dual stereo speakers on this device, but I'm curious to know what that is. I'm not sure if that's the dual stereo speaker or if the little slit right here at the top in the earpiece is the speaker. Hmm, but I will find out. To the left of the device, we've got an antenna line and the alert slider right here, which OnePlus is so, uh, so well known for. We've got another antenna line here on the bottom left side of the device. And then if we take it to the bottom, we've got our SIM tray right there, which we have dual nano SIMs, okay? We've got another noise canceling mic, antenna line, antenna line, charging port, bottom firing speaker, and then to the rear of this device. Wow, look at the design on it. It's got like this design. It's, it's I don't even know what it looks like, a marble. Man, that looks so dope. And then just the way the camera is and the way the lenses are encased. And then you got the little marble design in the camera as well. You see you've got the little H in the glare for Hasselblad. And then of course, you know, the OnePlus logo right there. Man, this is, this is, this is dope. This is a, this is a, yeah, this, this, this is real nice. This is real nice. So yeah, uh, that is uh, what I'm going to call it for the hardware tour. I'm going to go ahead and get things situated and set up and then I'll, um, I'll be back with the desktop and we'll go over some features, functions and get into the settings and, you know, really, uh, really scrutinize this device pristine style. Get it to the camera, take a couple of photos, check out all the camera modes and everything. And then um, I'll go ahead and call the video. All right. So I'll be right back with you. All right, y'all, we are back in. Welcome to the desktop for the uh, OnePlus 12. Man, 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 man. It's, you know, it's it's been a while. And, uh, you know, I, I forgot how much I really like Oxygen OS. I mean, I was a big fan of it, um, you know, back, back, back in the day. I mean, you know, the OnePlus 3 was my first OnePlus device. Um, and I've had, you know, I think, I think, I've had every OnePlus device with the exception of the um, the the OnePlus 10 and the OnePlus 11 and the OnePlus Fold, but the or the OnePlus Open rather, but the OnePlus Open is 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 on its way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, because you know, again, and just if if there's a foldable option available, I'm all over it, man. I'm all over it. Um, this device is very impressive. Uh, my understanding is that there were some people that were in a bit of an uproar because MKBHD decided not to do a full review just because he's working on other things, which was very clear to me. Um, but he gave, you know, just a brief explanation in his waveform clips talking about the OnePlus 12. And he mentioned that he thought it was a really, really, really good phone. Um, said something to the effect that he didn't feel like there were, you know, too many changes from last year, which basically just, you know, big ups OnePlus for how well they did with the OnePlus 11. Um, but they just, you know, mildly improved upon, you know, the job that he thought that they did last, last year, which that's a be that, that should be sufficient enough. So I can't understand why people would be in a bit of an uproar. Um, this man is super busy. He's got a lot of projects and things going on. I mean, and there's tons of other people that are reviewing the device. I mean, so is, you know, myself included. So it's not like, you know, people aren't going to be able to find out whatever it is that they're looking to gain from, you know, us, you know, reviewers or influencers, you know, whatever you want to call us you know what I'm saying, to help them, you know, uh, make an informed decision as to whether or not the OnePlus 12 is something that they want to commit to. I mean, that's kind of, it's kind of crazy to me. Um, but, uh, you know, I digress. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we're getting this phone set up. I mean, some things, you know, some, some things just started resurfacing and I just, you know, was, was, was reintroduced to my reasoning as to why I loved OnePlus devices before. And like I said, I went away from them just because the pricing every year that came out, the pricing just went up and up and up and up and up. And, uh, I'm like, yo, that's completely against the grain from what you guys hit the ground running doing. You know what I mean? You're more so known for putting out premium products at a fraction of the cost. 
you know? So it really seems like OnePlus is really getting back to that. I mean, giving us two different versions of the OnePlus 12 here, which is the big boy. You got the 12R, which is not too much of a drop off than this. You know what I mean? And it's only what, $4.99, but you get a hundred bucks off. If you trade in a device, you get a hundred dollar instant credit, making it $3.99. Um, you know, that's got a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor in it. Um, and a couple of other things uh, uh, that um, that are just a little bit of a downgrade from this, but that is not a bad phone at all whatsoever. That, <laughs> that phone is for sure also a flagship killer. And at $3.99, this at $699 with a with a hundred dollar instant trade-in credit, man, that is an absolute steal. And it honestly makes me wonder if I want to keep my S24 Ultra here in the lineup. I mean, yeah, the OnePlus 12 is that good. And if you look at these two phones side by side, um, and I'm gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison. That that video is gonna be just strictly dedicated to comparing the OnePlus 12 versus the uh, the Galaxy S24 Ultra. But if you look at both of these de these these devices in their totality, and you look at pricing, and you look at everything that both of these devices are offering, okay, the only thing that I can honestly say that the Ultra has over the OnePlus 12 is an S Pen. And the whole AI, you know, stuff, you know, circle a subject, Google a search it, you know what I mean? And that's cool, right? It's good. You know, we, we live in an, in, an, in an AI generated world right now. I mean, there's never been a time that has been as technological as the world in which we live in right now in 2024. But I don't see the whole AI functions of the S24 series being hundreds of dollars better than the OnePlus 12. You know what I mean? Like I said, the OnePlus 12 is $699 right now with, an, with, with the trade-in if you get it through OnePlus of any phone in any condition. The regular price starts at $799, which I think is a great price. So they're majorly undercutting the price of Samsung because the starting price for the S24 Ultra is $1,300, $1299.99. So if you look at that and you look at both of these devices side by side, both of them have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor. Uh, I believe the Ultra here has 12 gigs of RAM, this being the 512 gigabyte variant of, of, of the OnePlus 12, 16 gigs of RAM, okay? We've got a 5,000 milliamp hour battery here on the S24 Ultra. We, had a, we have a 5,400 milliamp hour battery here on the OnePlus 12, I mean, that's 400 more milliamps of battery life. 16 gigs of RAM versus 12. You got the Hasselblad cameras. I mean, so, you know, the cameras may be neck and neck. Heck, I don't know. I mean, the cameras on the OnePlus 12 may be, you know, a little bit better, you know, than, than, than the cameras that are on the Ultra. I mean, I have to test that out. We'll see. But I'm just saying on paper. If you look at both of these phones side by side, they, they stack up very well against one another. These are two very, very similar devices, very similar. And I just don't believe that Samsung is what? 699, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, $700 better than this. Hell no to the no, no, no. Ooh, ooh, I can tell you that right now. The Galaxy S24 Ultra is not $700 better than the OnePlus 12. Not by a long shot. Not by a long shot. So it just makes you wonder, you know, if you're looking at both of these devices and you want the bleeding edge tech and a cell phone for 2024, you're getting that in both of these devices. So it really just comes down to what you want. If you want an S Pen and stylus support and all that, then okay, that's a no brainer. But if that's not something that you really use that often, you know, like for me, it's just more of just like a, 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 a niche type thing, right? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I, I've had several notes and ultras where I don't even use the S Pen. Every now and then it's cool to pull out the pen and take a little note here and there. You know what I mean? You know, but a lot of the stuff that is used for, you know, signing documents, DocuSign and all that. I mean, you can do all that stuff without an S Pen. I, I sign documents on my iPhones all the time and the iPhones are not 
Apple Pencil compatible. You know what I mean? So it's just, you know, they, they try, the way they try to sell it, they try to make it seem like it's something that you need, but it's like, when in actuality, it's not. And it's like, if it's gonna save you money, well, we've been browsing this long without AI. I mean, AI, it's a cool way to do it, but I mean, AI ain't worth paying an additional 700 bucks. This, this, this phone right now is damn near half the cost of this. And it can go spec for spec. I mean that that's that's just insane to me, Mr. So, so hold on. So let me let me let me get back in frame, man, because this is starting to turn into, you know what I'm saying? I mean, a, a, a versus video, and that's a whole separate video. So I just want to make you know keep my focusness here on the OnePlus 12. Um, but uh, yeah, getting everything set up again, as I mentioned, reintroduced to uh, a, a lot of the reasons why I love, you know, love OnePlus devices. 120 hertz display, I mean. Everything is just super smooth. I mean, so performance, again, this is the 512 gig storage variant, uh, 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 16 gigs of RAM. I mean, that's insane. I mean, this is a, you're talking about a gaming phone. My God. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, what can't you do on this device? You know, what, what can't you do on this OnePlus? You know, 80 watt charging brick that comes in the box. The only thing that I don't like about the presentation is that it did not come with a case. The Chinese variant comes with a case, and I actually thought that a case was going to be in this box as well because the box is kind of thick. You know, it's kind of reminiscent of how boxes used to be when the charging brick was in the in the box. You know what I mean? So that was a little deceptive, and I found out that the uh, the the North American versions and you know the international versions they don't have cases in the box, but the Chinese variants they have cases in the box. So I'm gonna have to go to Amazon and spend you know twelve to fifteen bucks on a case for this joint. No big deal. But that would have been that would have been nice. That really would have been nice. Um, but uh, yeah, man. I mean, um, my bad, y'all. Hold up. Okay, sorry about that. I had a phone call coming in. But uh, yeah, you know, man. One plus. I mean, they they aren't they aren't playing. Okay. So again, you see the whole scrolling effect. You know, this is a very refresh rate from one hertz all the way up to 120 you know the the refresh rate is going to vary based on what you're doing with the device um you see swiping swiping up to the app drawer things are buttery smooth you know what i mean i remember when i first started reviewing phones the 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 the, the main way to describe how smooth the phone was was just you know oh it's just like a hot knife through butter you know and i get it because it's a very you know you know just just get straight to the point you know hey this is what it is and so that i mean that's that's what this is you know it is like a hot knife through butter i mean everything that i've thrown at it since getting it set up i mean it's handled it very well there's been no stuttering no lagging no glitching you know even when i was downloading all my apps onto the phone um I didn't do a restore from another one of my devices. You know what I'm saying? I just went to the Play Store and just selected all the apps. You know, I've got all my, all 53 of the apps that I mainly use memorized. And so while all those apps were downloading at the same time, I'm just browsing through the phone. You know, usually, you know, when you got a lot of stuff like that happening, you know, there's slowdowns, things stutter a little bit. Uh-uh, not with this OnePlus 12. I mean, and every, all 53 of those apps, you know, downloaded in their entirety and like, seven minutes i mean it was insane it was ridiculous you know what i mean it was i mean everything was just super fluid it's flawless you know swipe down um you know to the notification shade okay it's just going to take you to some quick toggles right there if you wait what i do what i do okay oh that's swiping down on the oh okay that caught me off guard. I didn't see that because I was trying to bring down the notification shade. So if you swipe down anywhere on the screen, and I believe that you can change that to bring down the notification shade. If you swipe down anywhere on the device, then you can do that. But this brings up, you know, a clock, uh, weather, uh, your steps. Welcome to uh, this is uh, OnePlus's notebook. And then Spotify right there will pop up once you log in. Now, let's see. Okay, there we go. So we have to swipe down from the top to get to the notification shade. Okay, um, we've got all of our quick toggles here. Again, you know, if you swipe down, you're going to get some notifications if you have any. Um, 
and then you see just briefly you got some just like your main toggles that you typically rock with these are all interchangeable if you want to change them we've got the brightness slider right there again mind you like i said peak brightness 1600 nits max brightness 4500 nits max brightness that ladies and gentlemen is you know like i said i mean if you have any problems viewing this device in any kind of lighting condition um optometry is the answer yeah optometry yeah because 4500 nits yeah that's that's blinding if you can't see this screen in 4500 nits yeah it's time to get them good old it's time to get them it's time to get them things checked on that little baby you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm saying but uh yeah so swipe down again this is going to bring up all of the quick toggles here and of course you know if you've got a couple of pages of them then you just swipe to the right and that's going to bring up the rest of them now these can be uh, uh uh reconfigured by just hitting this little icon right here that's the well well that's the settings icon my bad didn't mean to lie to you okay oh yeah we hit the three dots right here to the right of the settings icon and then we hit edit tiles okay so that's what oneplus refers to them as they call them tiles okay so you see you've got all the minus signs you got the plus signs so these are the ones that are currently you know in your tile section and then you got more functions down here and so what you do um if you want to pull anything you can just click and drag one of the tiles from your box and slide it down the more functions if you want to get rid of it and you can click long press and drag something from the more functions up into your tiles box if that's what you want to do or you can just hit the minus and get rid of it and then for the more functions you can hit the plus and that's going to add it to you know your tiles box there and you'll be able to use that uh however you want to you can move them around customize them however you see fit um but yeah man this phone it's just it's got it's got everything it's got it's got everything i'm i'm man the ir remote man i am blown away by the fact that here in 2024 we're seeing devices with ir blasters again i mean that's that's crazy to me you know what i'm saying because i thought that that was just i I thought that that was something that once it went away, it was never coming back. You know what I mean? So it's good to see that the IR blaster is, uh, you know, it's made a return. Um, I don't see it on the Ultra. Uh, Samsung. You're killing me, Smalls. All right. But uh, yeah, so that's how you change, you know, your tiles if that's what you want to do. Okay, now again i like you know the gestures double tap to put the phone to sleep double tap to wake it up fingerprint sensor nice and flawless okay i'll do that again for demonstration's sake no problems at all whatsoever let's test that facial recognition real quick okay so go ahead and look at the phone and boom it's unlocked I have to set it to where I want it to pop into the home screen once it unlocks, but you can see the little unlock icon right there. I'll go ahead and lock it and just lift it up again. And you see it unlocked as soon as it saw my face and then you just swipe up and then it takes you to the home screen. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's uh, real quick, let's pop into the settings menu. Okay. Let's get that straightened up for you the haptic engine on this device is one of the best haptic engines that i have ever felt it is extremely premium feeling it doesn't feel cheap it doesn't feel like one of those haptic engines where you're just like okay this is terrible unbearable i gotta turn this off hashtag bars terrible unbearable man Album's dropping in 2024, y'all. I'm telling you, man. I, I'm, I'm spitting that hot fire. You know what I'm saying? Don't sleep on your boy Pristine. You know? Bars. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, but uh, yeah, the haptics, very premium. You know, very refreshing. I mean, a nice, strong vibration motor. You know, when you're getting phone calls, when you're getting notifications, you really, really feel this thing. Okay? And I'm a huge fan of that. Right when you go in the settings... Old haptics experience true to life haptic feedback. When you touch on that, 
It takes you to old haptics. All new haptics mimic the feel of real materials and natural interactions for a true to life immerse, immersive experience. Okay, that's turned on by default where you can, you can, you know, the haptic intensity, you can increase it or decrease it. And then how touches feel. So by default, it's on crisp. Now, if we click on this, it's gonna be crisp or gentle. So it says, feel the haptic style you select when you unlock your device. Touch and hold app icons, scroll on time pickers, tap navigation buttons, and more. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave it on crisp because I like the way that that feels. But if crisp is a little too intense for you as far as the vibration intensity, then you can put it on gentle. And you can just have a gentle vibration. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so that is O haptics. Okay. Now, if we scroll over, okay, that's one handed mode, all new one handed mode. Okay. So all we're going to do is just swipe down on um, the, the, the gesture bar, swipe down from the bottom of the screen, enter one handed mode, swipe up or tap the area at the top of the screen to exit. This feature works only when navigation gestures are enabled. Okay, so we'll go ahead and turn that on. I mean, just in case I ever need to use that. Swipe down. It gives a little tutorial right there. You can see that. That's how you work that. All right. Boom. Okay, then we go to hollow audio. Experience sound from different locations. Ah, okay, what is this? Okay, it says connect your headphones to experience hollow audio. Hollow audio experience sound from different locations when playing multiple audio sources at the same time. Play multiple audio sources at the same time in different spatial locations so you can easily distinguish between them. You can customize the locations of ringtones, alarms, notifications, game sounds, videos, audio books, music, navigation, and game voice chats. Okay, by default, this is turned off. Okay, so if you want that on, <clears throat> then you just go ahead and click that little toggle right there, turn that bad boy on. All right, what else we got here? Then we got spatial audio, okay? So it says current device speaker. Um, so spatial audio is off, but it says enjoy immersive surround sound when you use supported music, video, and game apps. The current audio device doesn't support head tracking. Okay, so yeah, it's good to see that this phone, it has uh, spatial audio. We've got, you know, Dolby Atmos, you know what I mean? You know, to give you some more options, you know, to customize sound. Yeah, you know, all the stuff that you're gonna need, you know, if you're, if you're listening to tunes or whatever you're doing on your phone. All right, now we have Omoji. Well, what is emoji? Oh man, I think that's it's like you create an emoji of yourself or something like that. I'll, I'll find it and yeah, it just went away before I can read it. But um, under the settings menu, Wi-Fi, mobile network, or the mobile network, we got SIM one and two. So there's your verification right there or confirmation rather that you know we do have dual SIM slots. You know what I mean for you to put dual SIMs into this joint mobile data, data usage, eSIM. We do have eSIM compatibility on this device. Um, download and activate a carrier profile to use a virtual SIM card, okay? And then it says you might also be looking for call settings. I mean, so I like the fact that too, you know, there's different things where it says you may be looking for, you know, if there's something that you're looking for, you don't know where to go, then it may be on one of those suggestions. All right, that's dope. All right, Bluetooth, all right. I've got that turned off. Connection and sharing, airplane mode, personal hotspot, VPN, NFC, private do not uh, private DNS, Android Auto, multi-screen connect, link to Windows, screencast, print, quick connect, quickly discover and connect to nearby devices. Okay. So that is all under connections and sharing. Now wallpaper and style. We've got wallpapers here. This is where you can change the wallpaper, always on display, font size. You can change the icon shapes. Um, 
and this is super dope because not only can you change the icon shapes, but you can create and you can create your own icon shapes, right? It says art plus icons, use redesigned icons for third party apps. Okay. You can make the icons bigger or smaller, show app names. I mean, so like the names on the apps, if you don't want the names, but just show the application, you can turn off the names of the apps. You know what I mean? So that is just kind of make your screen not seem or look as cluttered. It would just give like a more clean look for, you know, all you're just seeing is the apps. Me, I like to see the names. I mean, so I'll turn that back on. But you guys see that? And you can turn the names off and on. Okay. And then you could also increase the size of the names. You guys saw that? So extra large. This is large. Medium. Default and small. So default is the sweet spot for me as far as the font size of the app names. So just go ahead and hit apply. It says applying and then boom, it's done. Always on display. Um, contextual information, show music info on the always on display and music playback. So this is what it looks like. So like if you're, you know, it's going to show the time, notifications. If you're playing music, the music controls are going to be right there. It says music playback, show music info on the always on display and bring up music controls when you double tap the screen. Nice. All right. And then you got these little, um, you know, I got a little earth up there. Um, you don't have to have that up there, but I thought it's a pretty nice looking little um, uh, animation, I guess. But you can personalize it. So you got a bitmoji canvas custom patterns text text and image and an emoji okay and then these are some of the things so we got a, a carbon footprint homeland insight the old school digital clock analog clock and a text clock for the always on display now i'm wondering too if you can set a timer because i'm not always on displays I like to set it for 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. You know what I mean? So if we go into more display settings, it says display mode, power saving, info, uh, time, date, battery, and notifications. Okay, so you can customize what you want to have shown on the always on display, but I don't believe that you can set a time that you want the always on display to start and stop. So if it's on, then it's just one of those things to where as soon as the screen goes to sleep, it's going to be on. OK, um, it would be nice to be able to turn that off and just set a timer for it. But hey, I'm not going to complain about that. You know, always on display is a favorite feature of mine, you know, because it just gives you the ability to just look at your phone and, you know, see the time, the date notifications. I mean, I think that always on display, you know, is, is, a, is, a, is a great thing. Great thing. So I'm, I'm not I'm not complaining about that, but I would have one plus I would have liked the timer for the always on display to, to, to have it come on. And maybe it does have it, I just need to find it, but you would think that that setting would be under the always on display settings, and I don't see anything like that. So that's what's leading me to believe that maybe it's not here, all right? Moving along, okay, wallpapers, okay? So you see you get, um, you know, just different. These are the live wallpapers. And by default, because this is the green one plus 12, you, you got the green default wallpaper, which looks very nice with the phone. I mean, the phone is a very striking looking device. I mean, so naturally you want to have something that's going to complement, you know, the body of the phone, you know what I mean? And just say just, you know, the green live wallpaper just sets it up, but you got static, which are still images. You know what I mean? If you're concerned about that, maybe the live wallpapers may drain some battery, then, you know, you can choose these still images as well. Um, and it's going to look, you know, just as good, you know, it just kind of gets rid of, you know, whatever the animations are that come with the live wallpaper. All right. And then you can go to album, you know what I mean? And so whatever photos that you've taken with your device, if you want to save that as a, as a wallpaper, you can, um, or you can go to workshop. And this is where you can create your own wallpaper. So it says take or select a photo and transform it into a unique wallpaper. So you've got a workshop here to create your own wallpaper. If you know, nothing that comes by default on the device is something that you're into, then, Hey, you can do your own thing, man. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah.
And that's 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 what I'm talking about. I like that customization. You know what I'm saying? I mean, give me the ability to do me. You know what I'm saying? If there ain't nothing on the phone that's on the phone by default that I'm feeling, then man, give me the ability to do me. Give me the ability to create and really personalize this thing and make it my own. You see, big fan of that. Big fan of that. Okay, so the user interface, we got colors. Okay, this is where you can change the colors of the, of the UI. Okay, you got featured colors and then wallpaper colors. Okay, and then the options that you have, you've got coastal, which I believe that's what it's selected by default. You got alpine, trendy, classy, geek, neutral, and custom. Okay, so those are the different color schemes that you could choose from on your device. All right, now, quick settings. Okay, oh, okay, these are... These are just the, the, the quick toggles when you swipe down from the top. We've already covered that, but this is just showing you again how you could, you know, you can customize, you know, the apps, you know, the shapes of the apps. You know, you got default square, squircle, window, squircle two, and rhombus. Okay, those are the six options that you've got as far as the, uh, the, the shapes that you want your app icons to be. All right. Okay, fingerprint animations. Okay, so by default, it's on Fizz. We got Bubble, Stardust, Cosmos, Ripple, Stripe, Fireworks, and None. Okay, so if we hit Bubble, that's what that's going to look like. Stardust. Oh, that's pretty dope. Okay, Cosmos. I like that. Ripple, Stripe, Fireworks, that's pretty dope, and then nothing, okay? Uh, let me see, I like that Fizz, that Fizz, that Fizz is dope, okay? So there's, you've got eight options to choose from for your fingerprint animations. All right, now, edge lighting. Super dope. Obviously, you know, this is just a, this is a, a, a page torn straight out of Samsung's playbook, but I ain't mad at it. I like it. I like it a lot. Mm. I like it a whole lot. Um, so yeah, um, I'm a, I'm a fan, you know, it's not quite the edge lighting that goes all the way around the display like the Samsung devices do. But you can see it just like pulses on both the sides. Like that's dope right there. And you know, the black screen, red is my favorite color. Black and red is my favorite color combination. And uh, so yeah, I'm riding with the black, but the colors you got blue, red, and is that, an, is that a white? Okay, yeah, blue, red, and, blue, red, and white. All right, you already know, let's go with that red. You know, let's go with that red. Okay, then it says you may also be looking for display size. Okay, so that's under wallpaper and style. All right, home screen and lock screen. So this is where you're gonna be able to change, um, you know, home screen mode, whether or not you do or don't want an app drawer. Okay, home screen layout. I've got five by five, which is five apps across five apps up and down on the display. By default, it's on four by five. Four apps across, five apps going, going up and down, okay? Oh, pardon me. We've got icon pull down gestures. Okay, so let's see. Swipe upward on the left or right side of the screen to pull down app icons without lifting your finger. Continue swiping to an icon and release to open the app. Ah, I see. That's pretty dope. I mean, it's just another little clever way to get to the app. I mean, I I don't think I would use that just because I'm so used to just scrolling and just tapping on the app that I want to use. But you got icon pull down gesture if that's something that you're into. OK. Um, but yeah, so lock home screen layout. That's just, you know, lock the home screen layout so you don't actually move or delete things. Icon autofill, double tap to lock. 
swipe down on home screen, this is gonna bring down the shelf, okay, or notification drawer. So this is what I'm saying. So when I was swiping down on the home screen, it brought down what OnePlus is calling the shelf. Um, but I can change that to notification drawer. So now I can swipe down anywhere on the display and it's gonna bring down the notification drawer, which is what I want, okay? That is what I want. All right, so app animation speed, adjust the speed of app startup and closing animations. That's on medium by default. Lock screen, raise to wake. Double tap to wake or turn off the screen. Show media player on lock screen. Lock screen shortcuts. Pocket miss touch prevention. And then recent task manager. System navigation, simple mode under you might be looking for, okay? So that's all under home screen and lock screen, all right? Okay, display and brightness, light mode, dark mode, you already know, dark mode, all black, everything, no races, you guys already know. Um, let's see, uh, schedule dark mode, nope, I want it dark all the time, dark mode settings, okay? Now, dark mode settings, okay, so you could adjust wallpaper to dark mode, adjust icons to dark mode, reduce contrast and low light conditions, adapt the contrast on screen to your environment, dark mode for third party apps, beta, zero apps on. And it says dark mode for third party apps allows you to apply dark mode to apps that do not already contain a dark mode option. It might not work properly for some apps. So it does give you a little bit of a heads, a heads up that yo, you can turn this on, but you know, it may not work properly if the app doesn't necessarily support dark mode. But I think that that's filthy for, you know, just to have the ability for apps that don't have dark mode. Cause it, if it were up to me, all apps are on dark mode. I don't like the fact that more than the majority of things that I do on my phone is all in dark mode. But then you come across certain applications where they just don't have dark mode and everything is like super bright. And I just like to look at everything dark. So what this does, is it forces the app, <laughs> you know, whether, even if it doesn't support dark mode to be in dark mode, but it's just saying that it may, it may be a little quirky. You know what I'm saying? Maybe a little quirky. All right. So be mindful of that. Um, but I think this is dope. I mean, you know, I see the only type of settings that I've ever seen on devices is dark mode or as it pertains to dark mode is whether or not you want to turn it on or off. And if you want to schedule it to come on or off at a certain time, I've never seen anything as extensive as this. So this is pretty, this is dope right here, man. This is what I'm saying. One plus they just, they, they, yeah, they hit you with the kitchen sink. And I like that. It's like, man, you know, you cram everything into this device and really give us an opportunity to really, you know, really personalize this thing. Okay. Auto brightness that's turned off screen color mode. So by default, it's on natural and it says recommended use soft muted colors. Pro mode use D65 color temperature. Vivid use vibrant and saturated colors. That's, my, that's what I'm talking about. Vivid, oversaturation, overkill. That's what I'm talking about. Look at the difference. Natural, right? Colors look natural. They look clean. They look, they look clear. You know what I mean? Now, let's go to pro. Pro is even darker then natural, use D65 color temperature. So that color temperature is more cool than it is warm because right when I hit pro, it, it, it converted from more of like a bluish tint. And then when you hit vivid, whoo, man, vivid, it's just, it's just, it's just vibrant. The colors just pop out at you. You know what I mean? See, I like a lot, to me, there ain't nothing wrong with a little oversaturation, man. I like colors to pop. I like it to be crisp, you see? And when you put it on Vivid, things are crisp, crisp, I say, crisp. You know, you really gotta enunciate the P at the end, crisp. You see what I'm saying? Crisp. <laughs> I'm saying crisp, man. But uh, yeah. And then you also get the ability to kind of toggle the colors you notice with natural, Oh, well, I guess you can color that you can, you could toggle the colors as well on natural or pro. I wasn't paying attention, but on vibrant, even these colors down here just kind of brighten up a bit. And then you can change its default cold 
warm. It gives you the ability to change, you know, the color temperature, no matter if you got it on Vivid Pro or natural, right? That's a nice touch right there. I like that. But uh, Vivid for me, man. Oversaturation for me, man. Crispness for me, man. Yeah. All right. Eye comfort and sleep. Okay. So this is giving you um, just a little brief tutorial on a bedtime mode. Um, just, you know, when you're just trying to rest, say if you're in your bedroom, got the lights turned down, but you're still reading some content on your phone, rather than dealing with a bunch of eye strain, you can put it in bedtime mode and it's going to like make, you know, give the screen just like this amber hue to it. You know what I mean? Which is less strenuous on the eyes. Um, and so it's just showing you now, you know, what the differences are when bedtime mode is on versus when it's off. So the left side of the screen is bedtime mode, not on right side of the screen is bedtime mode on really it's just it's just like making you know the 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 the, the colors really warm and just kind of giving it like this extremely yellowish tint to it you know what i mean to be a little bit less intense on the eyes in darker environments which is good right that's a good thing you you want something like that you don't want to ruin your eyes so this is definitely a good feature to have it says from sunset to sunrise the screen temperature automatically switches to warm colors this matches your body's natural sleep cycle so you can fall asleep more easily. Okay. Then you got under eye protection, you got eye comfort, smart, automatically adjust the screen color temperature based on ambient lighting conditions to reduce eye strain. Then you got custom, customize the color temperature to adjust the intensity of the blue light filter or schedule when to apply the filter. Then you got flicker reduction, ultra anti-flicker, uses proprietary anti-flicker technology to ensure consistent color and smoothness while minimizing flicker. Okay, so OnePlus got you in the eye protection. All right, got you in the eye protection. Okay, natural tone display, automatically adjust screen color temperature in response to ambient lighting. So that may be a play out of uh, Apple's playbook um you know just with the whole um what is it true tone display i notice on the iphones all true tone display is is just you're, you're basically just toggling the color temperature to warm because when you turn it on everything has like an extreme yellowish tint to it when you turn it off then things go back a little bit cool and they seem to brighten up a little bit so that feature natural tone display that's what that reminds me of okay then this is where you have the ability to change the font the display size image video enhancement engine image sharpener that's turned off by default okay but if you want that turned on enhance the clarity of low quality images and videos battery usage will be increased okay so turn on image sharpener at your own risk okay but it gives you a little slider here on what things look like with image sharper uh, image sharpener on versus with image sharpener off. All right. Okay, we got video color boost. That too is off by default. Okay. SDR to HDR technology widens the color gamut for a super visual experience. This will increase battery usage. Okay, so that's turned off by default. It also gives you a little tutorial right there of what it looks like with it off versus what it looks like with it on. Okay. God, man, you just got a, a, a whole host of things to, 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 to customize and toggle on this device. Auto rotate, auto screen off. I got that 30 minutes just for the sake of this video so that it's not constantly going to sleep. Um, adaptive sleep, screen resolution. Okay. So we got auto select saves power by automatically switching the screen resolution according to the display content then we got standard which is 2376 by 1080 longer battery life and that's what it's on by default and then you got high at 3168 by 1440 which is the sharper image okay then you got adaptive detail enhancement intelligently recognizes your scene and brings out subtle details for video and reader apps Okay, so that's under screen resolution where you're going to be able to toggle, you know, whether or not you want it on 1080 or the full QHD display. 
You know what I mean? You do whatever floats your boat. All right, everybody. So that's everything that falls under the screen resolution. All right. Now let's slide up out of this hill and let's go on down the screen refresh rate. Okay. Now by default, it is on auto select. Now, if we click on that, we are going to get a little bit of a depiction, if you will, of the higher refresh rate versus the standard refresh rate. Now you will see to the left for the higher refresh rate, things are going to look buttery smooth, silky smooth, nice and smooth, oh so smooth. But then when you look on the right side of things to the standardized things, then, you know, things are going to just look a little bit choppy and, you know, not as responsive. And, you know, I've even seen OEMs give like a similar visual depiction of what the screen looks like with the higher refresh on or off. And I've seen some OEMs run a little bit of trickery, right? I've seen them pull the 42 fake, right? They'll make the standard look less egregious to make people believe, oh, okay, well, if I turn off the high refresh rate, no biggie, right? 60 Hertz, things are going to look very similar. And then you turn off the high refresh rate. And it's just an absolute train wreck. I mean, absolutely atrocious. Now, the only, the only scenario that I would recommend turning off the higher refresh rate is if you are suffering battery wise. Okay. Now, if your battery falls under 15 or 20%, regardless, you know, depending on what you got it set as under your battery settings, then by default, when the phone enters low power mode, it's going to turn off the auto refresh, uh, the, 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 the higher refresh rate automatically. So, you know what I'm saying? I mean, if you, if, you know, if you are holding on tooth and nail to get through the rest of your day and you only got a little bit of battery life left, then yes, I would recommend under that scenario, boom turn off the high refresh rate or make sure that you got your 80 watt charging brick near you that came in the box because OnePlus is claiming zero to hundred percent charge in 26 to 30 minutes. Ooh, that's, that's insane. That's pretty crazy to me, but it's, 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 it's real deal. Like Holyfield who bars. Um, so yes, if you want to toggle the higher refresh rate, then boom, this is what it is. Now, by default, it is on auto select, okay? Automatically uses the optimal refresh rate for your device to bring you a continuous smooth experience and conserve battery power, okay? That's gonna be your best option as far as trying to conserve battery, okay? Now, you got standard, which a maximum refresh rate of 60 hertz to conserve battery, and then high, uses a refresh rate up to 120 hertz for an optimal visual effect and a smooth experience. This may increase battery usage and cause the device to heat up. You can further specify the refresh rate for individual apps. Okay. So it's giving you the, 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 the actual factual right there. Okay. What you choose to do is on you. Personally, I would keep it on auto select. Okay, that's going to be the most cost effective option for the sake of your battery. And it's also going to give you the best experience possible with you using your device. Okay. And that, ladies and gents, is where you go to toggle the screen refresh rate. Moving right along. Okay, now we got full screen for apps. And then it says you might be looking for wallpapers. If indeed you are looking for wallpapers, then you can click on that and it will take you right to wallpapers. All right. Now <clears throat> that was all under the display and brightness settings. Now let's go down to sound and vibration. Okay. We got the alert slider here, top left of the device. It says you can use the alert slider on the side of the phone to switch between modes. By default, this slider determines the mode applied to notifications and incoming calls. Okay. It's, 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 it's textured. It's the only thing that's on the left side of the phone. So you don't have to be looking at this phone to get a hold of the alert slider and either toggle your notifications and ringtone to vibrate or turn them off completely. If you're in a meeting and you forgot, you know, to turn it off, 
you slip your hand in your pocket, alert slider, toggle it down. Okay. If you're in a movie, you know what I'm saying? And you know, you movie theaters packed, you know what I'm saying? Super high anticipation. People are getting grumpy because they're ready for the start, the show to start. Your phone rings and people are looking like, man, where's that coming from? Like they want beef. You know what I'm saying? Then you can just oh so casually slip your hand into your pocket or purse. Ladies, you know, your, your man bag, fellas, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you rocking with these days in 2024. You know what I'm at? Slide that alert slide on down, man. And uh, yeah, that's 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 it. That's what it is. OK, one plus is known for that. OK, um, and it's it's a very useful feature. I credit one plus and um, and Apple because I know that Apple, you know, they they have the little alert switch, you know, on on the iPhones. And that's a very useful tool. Like people may kind of downplay it like it's not really a big deal. But when you're in a bit of a pinch and you need to turn notifications and ringtones on or off, then sometimes just having that ease of use just to click a switch and boom, it's done just like that. That's that comes in handy, right? Comes in handy. All right. Under, uh, well, real quick before we get the sound, but we got live caption, automatically captioned speech. Okay. Um, so for live caption, it says live caption detects speech on your device and automatically generates captions. Okay. By default, it's turned off, but you can set the languages, English only, more languages coming soon. High profanity. So profanity will be replaced with an asterisk symbol. That's dope. Okay. I know some of y'all got potty mouths out there. You know what I'm saying? No judgment. Just saying. It is what it is. Show sound labels. Include sound like laughter, applause, and music. Live caption and volume control. Okay. And then it says help. And it says how to use live caption. Keep in mind for live caption. All right. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is live caption. Okay. Under the sound mode, we've got vibrate to ring, vibration intensity, which again, I mean, the haptic engine on this device is super strong, super premium. Can't imagine why anybody would want to turn that off because of the way that it feels. But, you know, everybody, everybody's different. You know what I mean? To each their own. Some people may love it. Other people, not so much. If you're not feeling it, then you can turn it off or you can scale down the vibration intensity. All right. Boom. Turn off media sounds in silent mode. Do not disturb. And then the volumes. We got media, ringtone, notification, and alarms. Now, I say this in a lot of videos. I can't stand when phones under the sound option have the notification tone and the ringtone under the same alert slider. Okay? So I am loving the fact that we have the ringtone, separate alert slider volume, and the notification tone, separate volume. If I want my ringtone to be sky high, super loud, but my notifications to be a little lower or vice versa, then I want to have the ability to do that without affecting the other. You see, so I'm a huge fan of having the volume separated for both the ringtone and the notifications. Okay, media and alarms, you know, that's, that's, that's never ever the same. But I've seen a lot of phones where the notification tone and the ringtone volume was the same slider. Very annoying, okay? <clears throat> now we got ringtone and alert sounds, ringtone, notification tone, more sounds, and this is dial pad tone, lock screen tone, screenshot sound, deletion sound, fingerprint animation sound, and touch sound. Okay. And we've got for sound effects, we've got Dolby Atmos, again, spatial audio, hollow audio, which we've already gone over that, hapt o haptics. And then when you click on more, this is going to give you volume button function, which let's see, volume button function, media volume by default. And then it says default device, external device when available. Okay. All right. Moving right along notifications and status bar. So this is where you're going to be able to control which apps are able to send notifications to your device. And you're also going to be able to control how notifications appear on your phone. So it gives a little tutorial here. Like if you want them on the lock screen, this is how it's going to appear on the lock screen. If you want a notification banner while your phone is open, it pops up at the top of the display like it shows here. Or if you want app icon badges 
and nothing to pop up on the display, then you'll just have a little dot on the app indicating that you've got notifications. But I think that's gonna offer a little bit more privacy because if somebody's looking over your shoulder, then you don't have a banner or something popping up on your lock screen, you know, showing notifications. Now, you can select to not show any information still show that you got a notification from whatever the source is, but not to show or read any of the message. And that's typically what I do. Okay. Now under status bar, we got notification icons. Okay. So whenever there's a notification from an icon near the time here at the top left, it's just going to pop up. Now that can get a very, that can get very cluttered and I get a lot of notifications. So what I do is I just hit notification number. You just have one little dot right there next to the time. And if I got 50 notifications and it's just going to say 50 in that little dot, and I don't have to worry about a bunch of the smaller notification icons, just clouding and, you know, flooding the upper left side of my device. Now I'm a minimalist. I don't like a lot of clutter and things like that. I mean, so, you know, having the numbers of the amount of notifications that I have to me is a godsend. Okay. I love or, or just don't show at all. Okay. So you got show icon, show number, or do not show. So I click, show number. All right. That's how I'm rocking. Okay. Battery style. That's pretty nice. So you got horizontal and you can see it up at the top, right? You got vertical, you got a loop or do not show. Okay. Now, either way, the battery percentage is right next to it, regardless of how you have it set up, whether it's vertical or horizontal. I think I would prefer vertical, prefer vertical just because it takes up a little bit more, a little less space. Again, I like to declutter things as much as I possibly can. So really, I don't even need an icon there as long as I can see the battery percentage. So yeah, I think I'm just going to go with do not show, but you do have three different options for how you want the battery icon to show. But I mean, for me, all I need is the battery percentage number and I'm, I'm Gucci. I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. Okay. Um, oh, my little thing is blinking. Oh, I think my battery is getting low. Okay. So I have to keep an eye on that. Um, <clears throat> all right. I see what's happening. Oh, that's blinking red. Okay. Um, hold on y'all. Let me change the battery of my microphone adapter here and I'll be right back with you because it's now blinking. Yeah. When it does that, low battery and I've messed around and was recording and wasn't paying attention to this. And once this dies, my audio drops and there's nothing like finishing a video, especially a video like this, that's super long. And then as I'm editing, go back to it and find that there's a major portion of the video where there's no audio sucks. It is not okay. <laughs> so let me change this battery and I'll be right back with you. All right, boom, we back in there. Okay, so yeah, as I was saying, battery percentage, all I need, I don't need the battery icon to be shown because it takes up more space in the area here. Minimalistic approach, y'all that are like me, man, it's good that we have the ability to just take that off completely as long as we can see the battery percentage. Or if you don't wanna see the battery percentage and you would just prefer to see, you know, one of these little icons, whether it be the loop, the vertical battery or the horizontal battery, then you can do that. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, battery percentage. Okay. So that's on. Then we got status bar icons, real time network speed, Bluetooth, HD voice, VO Wi-Fi, silent mode, NFC, earphones, alarm, data saving, high performance mode, do not disturb and VPN. Okay. That's under status bar. Okay. Um, smart notification hiding. The content of banner notifications will be hidden when the front camera detects someone other than you is looking at your phone. Ah, oh boy. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my man, Flossie Carter. That sounds like a little thought protection right there. One plus. Yeah. Okay. Hold up. Let me, let me read that one more again. Okay. Not one more time. One more again. You see what I'm saying? 
smart notification hiding, the content of banner notifications will be hidden when the front camera detects someone other than you is looking at your phone. So yes, your front camera is always watching. You know what I'm saying? I always feel like somebody's watching me. You know what I'm saying? Your one plus 12 is always watching you. Yeah, baby, I had to sing it to you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Wasn't prepared for that one. That's a little crazy. Dope, right? I'm not complaining about that, but that's dope. So if you like, see me, I, I don't do banners and see when you click. So when you click on, you know, one of these like lock screen, for instance, when you click on it, it's going to, okay. Lock screen notifications. And this is what I was talking about. Show app and notification content. What I do is I hit show app only. So show notification content only when the device is unlocked. No, see, I don't even want that. Well, I wanted to show the, see, I don't know if it shows the notification from the app or if, it, or, or if, if I hit do not show, I'm not sure if that's just not showing me the notification at all or it's showing the notification, but just not the information. That's what I'm talking about. I don't mind if it shows the notification. I just don't want the content of the notification being shown because that is private. And if I'm around people, I don't want people to see, you know what I'm saying? Not that I'm hiding anything, but privacy, you know what I'm saying? So show app and notification content, show app only show notification content only when the device is unlocked. Uh, interesting. Okay. Wake screen when a notification is received. All right. So that's for lock screen. And it's going to be the same for all of them. So for banner says when you use an app in full screen, such as when watching videos, playing games or in conference calls, banner notifications will be simplified to minimize distractions, but it's still showing like a piece of the content. Right. Um, so yeah. Uh, app icon badges. Okay. So the badges is just either a number or a dot. Okay. Yeah. Let's go with the number. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's what I'm talking about right there. Okay. So no banners, No lock screen. Yeah, that's yeah. Okay. I think that's where I think that's what I'm looking at right there. Okay. Now more settings display data usage in notification drawer, allow notification snoozing, reduce notification feedback. What is that? When you use an app in full screen, such as when watching videos or playing games, notification sounds are softer and vibration is less strong. Okay. We got bubbles, enhanced notifications, get suggested actions, replies, and more at a glance. Okay. So at a glance is calendar events, next upcoming meeting alerts, upcoming flight information, reminders, next upcoming reminder alerts, birthdays, reminder for upcoming birthdays, weather, current weather information, weather alerts, forecast for severe weather, sports updates, reminds, live scores, games, summary alerts. And then work profile, next upcoming alerts from work profile. Man, this phone is just, it, it, it's just, it's just filled to the brim. You know what I'm saying? With all these features. Okay. Notification history that's turned off by default, but you can turn that on. And it says, uh, turn on notification history to view past notifications, including snoozed ones. Okay. So yeah, that's uh, under more settings under notifications and status bar. And then of course the app notifications is going to take you down the list of all the apps that you have on your phone. And you can basically tell the phone which notifications you do or do not want to receive notifications from. Okay. All right. Now under apps, we got app management, app cloner, create app clones and run them at the same time. Default apps, disabled apps, recover system apps, special app access. And then it says you might be looking for app lock if that's what you're looking for. 
Okay, security and privacy. Device may be at risk, see alerts. Okay, so, you know, if it tells you that, then you may want to pay attention to that. Uh, this phone is brand new, so I can't imagine why it would be. Uh, it's because my location is off. Yeah, I always try. I never have my location on because my location is my location. You want to know where I'm is? I'm on planet Earth, baby. You know what I'm talking about? I'm on the Earth. You know, you don't need to be able to pinpoint my exact location. I, right? but everything else is a go, you know, um, but the app security play, uh, play protect scanning is on device unlock, screen lock, face and fingerprint unlock account security. Google account is protected. Device finders is just yellow because my location is off system updates. Check for, for, for security updates. Um, everything was secure when I, or updated when I took the phone out of the box, there wasn't like an update waiting for me. Um, aside from the apps being updated that were already pre-installed on the device, um, privacy permissions, dashboard and controls, and then more security and privacy app lock, hide apps, private safe and system cloner. All right. Location safety and emergency. Now let's go to safety and emergency real quick. Okay. Use emergency SOS on the device unlock screen. Okay. And can I swipe to the right? There we go. Use emergency SOS on the power off screen. Okay, so emergency SOS, we click on that. Quickly access emergency SOS, emergency SOS, automatically make an emergency call when you enter the emergency SOS page by pressing the power button five times in quick succession. So man, if something's going down and you need 911 immediately, then yeah, you smash that button five times and you it is send uh, uh an sos call to uh the emergency services all right emergency contacts not yet set but this is where you go add emergency contact if something were to happen to you okay and then your medical information also not set but here's where you can plug in all your medical information you plug in all your ailments you know illnesses viruses whatever you know brief description of your of your of your medical history um what you're allergic to, any medications that you may be on just to kind of help, you know, if you were to pass out somewhere and somebody were to get a hold of your phone, they can access, they can't get into your phone per se, but they can access your medical information. And believe it or not, just by taking this, the little bit of time to put that information in your device may be a lifesaver for you. Okay. Because it's definitely going to give people some quick insight on what to do versus what not to do if you're ever in an emergent situation, especially if you go into cardiac arrest and you need um, resuscitative measures. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, you know, don't sleep on those little things because you never know. You just never know. All right. <laughs> you know, God forbid that anything happens to either one of us. But in the event that it does, then having something like this is a very, very useful tool and it just may save your life. Yeah. All right. Okay. Emergency location services. And this is other Google play services, unknown tracker alerts, wireless emergency alerts, emergency alert history. Okay. Now under battery, let's see, uh, 30% can last about eight hours and 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. True. Just depending on how you use your device. Okay. Um, but this is where the battery is being monitored. This is also where the phone is learning your usage patterns. You know what I mean? To be able to, you know, determine how battery life should be distributed or what it should be distributed to. Um, again, I'm a light to moderate user, so I typically don't have issues with batteries on either phone. Even if it's a small phone with a small battery, I still can get through a full day, you know? Um, so surely, you know, these phones with these bigger batteries, I don't have an issue at all whatsoever. Um, battery usage by app, power saving mode, battery health. Let's go on battery low. Okay. So under battery health, you've got battery booster, maximum capacity, hundred percent, smart charging, stop charging at 80%. Okay. Um, and that's all just to, you know, conserve the battery. And the differences are battery booster combines biometric electrolyte technology, 
and an exclusive intelligent battery health algorithm to keep lithium ions active for an extended battery life. Okay, so it says here the maximum battery capacity is 100%. The maximum capacity is an estimate of your device's current battery capacity compared to when it was new. A lower percentage means less usage time between charges. Smart charging. To slow down battery aging, intelligent services learns your charging habits and adjust changing patterns or charging patterns accordingly. Stop charging at 80%. I've noticed that people have talked about this and they never quite understood why, but it's a battery saving measure. Okay, to slow down battery aging, charging will stop when the battery level reaches 80%. And that's just what the device does to try to protect you and save your battery. All right. Okay. So we got smart rapid charging, reverse wireless charging. Yes, I did mention at the top of the video that we do have that feature, reverse wireless charging, wireless charging settings, charging tutorial, quiet charging, always bedtime and custom. Okay. So quiet charging, the wireless charger runs at a low power level to minimize noise. Bedtime, your phone learns your sleep patterns to automatically switch to lower power charging when you go to bed. Okay. Super dope. Okay. Then more charging settings at high performance mode, optimized battery use, sleep standby optimizations. Okay high performance mode, get the best possible performance out of your device, but may also increase battery consumption and cause your device to heat up. Optimize battery use, automatically optimize power usage when apps are draining battery in the background. Okay, sleep standby optimization, your device consumes less power and sends fewer notifications when you are asleep. Okay, so hey, I mean, you know, all these things are gonna have an effect on the performance of your device. All right, and show battery level and status bar. Okay, don't need that. Okay, we're getting there, ladies and gents. Special features. We got split view, display two apps at once for easier multitasking, flexible window, get more done with floating windows, quick return, quickly go back to an app by tapping the quick return window, Quick launch, access frequently used functions while unlocking your device. Smart sidebar, quickly launch apps for access functions from the sidebar. And that's just kind of like, that. that's like, like Samsung's um, edge panel, like the little red thing, that little red bar right there. Pretty similar to that on the OnePlus. Um, we got kids mode, digital well-being start, uh, starts early. Simple mode, get larger text, bigger icons, and louder sounds. Zen Space, a flexible app that helps you stay focused. Okay, so those are all the features that we find under special features. Then we got digital well being and parental controls, additional settings, system navigation, gestures. This is where we can toggle that if you want the back, home, or recents buttons, which I think are pretty prehistoric in 2024, but you know, some people may just not want to use the gestures. This is where you go to toggle that on or off. You can hide gesture guide bar, vibrate on back navigation, switch to previous app, miss touch prevention, which is on by default, learn gestures, sensitivity to back gestures. So you can set, you know, you know, how, you know, uh, high or low you want the swipe gestures to be in order for the phone to respond to those gestures. And then it says you may also be looking for keyboard mistouch prevention. So you can turn that on as well to make sure that you're not accidentally typing things. Okay. Language and region, app languages, keyboard and input method, date and time, accessibility, assistive ball, gesture and motions, Okay, screen off gestures, swipe down with three fingers to take a screenshot, that's on by default. Touch and hold with three fingers to take a screenshot, also on by default. Air gestures, control your phone with hand gestures without touching the screen. Ah. That's a play out of Samsung's playbook back in the day. Answer calls, hold the back of your hand 
20 to 40 centimeters from the front camera with your finger tips pointed down. When a prompt appears at the top of the screen, flick your hand up to answer the call. Okay. Oh, come on. Okay, and then mute calls. Oh, okay, so that's going to be separate. So to answer a call, you have your, home, your hand up like this, and then you swipe up. So this motion and swipe up to answer the call. To mute the call, hold your palm 20 to 40 centimeters from the front of the camera with your fingertips pointed up. When a prompt appears at the top of the screen, keep your hand still for 1.5 seconds to mute a call. Oh, okay, so you don't move it down. You just go like this. Okay, and it'll mute the call. Okay, that's, that's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. Air gestures. Okay, interesting. Didn't see that coming. Um, and those are under gestures now. We got motions. Raise to wake. Lift to, lift to ear to answer calls. Auto switch receiver. Automatically switch to, re to the receiver when you lift your phone to your ear. Flip to mute incoming calls. Yeah, I like that. Flip to mute. Okay. So those are under gestures and motions. Now let's go to accessibility real quick and see what we got. Now I can tell you right off top, I like how this reminds me of LG. I used to love the LG settings where they had all the settings in these different grids that you can swipe side by side. So we got general vision, hearing and interaction. So under general accessibility, we got press power button to end calls, accessibility menu, show frequently used functions in a large menu. Okay. So this is just going to, you know, make everything super large on the display. Okay. Those that are compromised visually. Um, <clears throat> accessibility button. Okay. Use button or gesture. Small size. Fade when not in use. The button will fade after a few seconds so it's easier to see your screen. And then transparency when not in use. That's nice. That's, that's a convenient feature to have. And then you got shortcut from lock screen. Allow accessibility function shortcuts to be accessed from the lock screen or download apps, downloaded apps. Okay, under vision, talk back, select to speak, describe images, text to speech settings, display, magnification, color correction, color inversion, high contrast colors, high contrast text, remove animations. Under hearing, we've got live caption, automatically captioned media, caption preferences, mono audio merges the left and right channels, channel volume balancing. Sliding to the left or right will lower the volume in the opposite channel. Okay, and then interaction. Okay, touch and hold delay, time to take action. Let's see, by default, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute or two minutes. About this function, choose how long to show notices that ask you to take action. Such notices include notifications and other system messages. Not all apps support this setting. Okay. So just the time before it takes action, you got default, which is immediate. 10 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute or two minutes before the device takes action or before the notification does what it's asking you to take action on. All right. We got ignore repeated taps for input devices, switch access, large mouse pointer, click when pointer stops. Okay. Those are all the accessibility settings. Okay. Back to additional settings, assistive ball. Let me see, uh, gestures and motions, which we've already covered. One handed mode, power button. Okay. So double click the power button for the camera or press and hold the power button for voice assistant. And you can change these to do none or okay. Well, uh, the phone is Alexa enabled, which I have Alexa. Just my house is like a smart, how a smart home. I mean, everything is Alexa all throughout the house. So that's pretty dope that Alexa is uh, standard on this device. Uh, Alexa is a very useful tool. Okay. Press and hold the power button by default. It's on voice assistant or you can hit power menu or yeah, I would prefer power menu or you can have it as the voice assistant for Google. Okay. 
All right, screenshot, screen recording, retouch appearance and video calls, schedule power on or off, OTG connection, get better compatibility with peripheral devices, including earphones and USB drives, system services, backup and reset. That's all under additional settings, which is interesting. Okay, about device, Oxygen OS, Oxygen OS 14.0, device name OnePlus 12, storage 41 gigabytes used out of 512 gigs. So I've got tons of storage left. The model number, processor Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 mobile platform, battery capacity 54 milliamp, screen size 6.82 as mentioned, gigs of RAM 16 plus four gigabytes, so what? 20 gigs of RAM? Come on, are you serious? It says RAM expansion. When enough storage space is available, you can use part of it to expand your RAM. And then it says expand by four gigabytes, eight gigabytes, or 12 gigabytes. Wow. Okay. So it says 16 gigs of RAM plus four gigabytes right there. Okay. And this is just other general information about the device. Front camera, 32 megapixels. Rear camera, 50 megapixel, 48 megapixel, 64 megapixel. Oh, I think I may have, I think I may have fumbled the ball on the front camera. Yes, on the front camera, we have a 32 megapixel sensor there. Okay, Android version 14. Okay, version, legal information, status, user guide, experiment, experience, improvement programs, award, and then regulatory is what we find under about device. And then we got users and accounts, Google help and feedback. Woo. It's a lot of settings. So like, that's a lot of settings right there. All right. So finally got through that. Now let's, let's pop into this camera real quick. Okay. All right. So we've got pro mode, video, photo, portrait, Okay, we see that Hasselblad there. It says, uh, take one time telephoto camera mimics. Oh, the one time telephoto camera mimics the bokeh effect of the Hasselblad XCD 30 millimeter lens, capturing the subject while reproducing their surroundings in an, imp in an impressionistic way, resulting in more artistic portraits. Okay. Then it says the 2X tele uh, telephoto camera mimics the bokeh effect of the Hasselblad XCD 65 millimeter lens with the human field of view, resulting in natural looking half body portraits. All right. And that's dope. It shows the lens right there. That's, that's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. Okay. Third and final one. The 3X telephoto camera mimics the bokeh effect of a Hasselblad XCD 90V lens, gracefully highlighting people or still life subjects against a soft blurred background. Okay. That is dope. Okay. That's under portrait. Now, when you go to more, these are the modes that we've got. We've got night mode, high res mode, panorama mode, movie, slow-mo, time-lapse, long exposure, dual view video, text scanner, tilt shift, and X pan. Okay. Uh, let's go to photo and all right. This is the flash. Let's see. EV, uh, slide to adjust the exposure value. Okay. So EV stand, I, I, I'm not a, camera professional. So I didn't know what that meant, but you toggle that to toggle the exposure value. What is this here? Uh, this is action mode. And so this is like, if you are trying to take a photo of a moving subject, maybe an animal running around or a kid, you know, it'd take a clear picture, even though the subject is on the go. Okay. This is Google lens. Okay. Which, you know, I'm pretty sure you guys are all familiar with Google lens. And then this is, uh, let's see. So by default, the uh, viewfinder is on four by three. We got one by one, 16 by nine and full screen. We got the timer three seconds or 10 seconds. 
we got auto HDR, uh, interval, and then settings. So we'll hit the settings real quick. Watermark on grid and guidelines. Yes, I like the grid lines. Leveler, yes, turn on the leveler. Shutter sound, mm, whatever, sure. Mirror selfie, save selfies as they appear in the viewfinder. Add location tags, nope. Preserve settings, now that's dope. I really like that feature because all that is is if you find a specific setting that you like the most, you hit preserve, preserve settings and whenever you go into your camera app, those settings are gonna be what you're rocking with. You're not gonna have to like constantly go and readjust those settings every time you wanna take a photo if you found the sweet spot or the perfect angle or the perfect whatever. You know what I mean? So preserve settings, shooting mode, creative effects, exposure setting, pro settings, auto macro. Some listed functions may not be available on certain device models and software versions. Okay. All right. And that's all under general. Now under photo, we got shooting methods, tap to capture or show palm. Okay. That's straight out of Samsung's playbook. So especially showing the palm of your hand, tap to capture. Uh, okay. It's a little different. All right. Touch and hold shutter button to record video or take a burst photo. We got default wide angle focal length at uh, one times 23 millimeter recommended. But if you click on that, you can go uh, 1.2 X, which is a 28 millimeter lens or the 1.5 X, which is 35 millimeters. So it's recommended to stay at the 23 millimeter, but you can change it to two different ones if that's what you want to do. I'll just keep it on the recommended setting for now. QR code scanning, portrait distortion correction, 10 bit color high efficiency image. And then under video, we got audio modes by default. It's under smart, but you got standard and smart, smart record stereo sound when taking video in landscape mode, the recorded sound volume of the subject will be automatically adjusted as you zoom in and out. This mode also reduces wind noise. Nice. Okay. So we'll keep it there by default. Okay. So, uh, focus lock, high efficiency video, handy features, volume button action, shutter, but you can have volume or zoom. Okay. We'll keep it on shutter. Quick launch, double press either the volume button to launch the camera when the screen is off. Um, show dirty lens warning, restore defaults about camera privacy. All right. So I'm going to take a couple of photos here real quick and I'm gonna get out you guys' way because I've been rambling long enough about this device. And let me see here. All right. So I'm gonna just take a photo of the box here, one plus 12. Nice quick shutter speed. Now I'm gonna get a selfie of your man pristine real quick. Wow, that is a wide angle. Wow, look at that. Look how wide that is. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. All right, let's see here. Very natural looking photo. Wow, it says one plus 12 Hasselblad, 21 millimeter F2.4 aperture. Wow, it's just, yeah, it just gives you the information and yeah, that is look at the detail. Man, that is that yeah. Wow. And then this is the shot that I just took. So the watermark, well, one plus twelve Hasselblad twenty-three millimeter F one point six aperture. Uh, 1.60 S ISO 640. Yeah, this, uh, this camera is serious. Look at that. One plus Hasselblad. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to get this out in the elements for a fact. 
um, definitely to put it up against this boy right here. Um, but uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that's where I'm gonna call this video. Um, you know, if you made it this far, man, I salute you. <laughs> you know, because I just went through everything. Um, shout out to everybody that appreciate these longer videos. Typically, it's my unboxing videos that are the longest because I'm trying to show everything. Again, if you're curious to know why my unboxings are so long, it's because my 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 channel is geared more towards a teaching experience, right? I want to try to show as much as I possibly can about a device because if you decide to commit to that device, then I want you to know all the things that you need to know about that device so you know exactly what it is that you're getting into. Okay. Now there are timestamps in the video, as I've said at the top of the video, so you can jump around the video. Like I said, if you've made it this far, if you've watched the whole thing, man, I salute you. You know, I I I I I, I appreciate you know, you know, your time and attention. But I know some people, they just like to bounce around the video and get the little nuggets that they need and then they're out. And that's cool too. You know, so shout out to y'all if that's you. Shout out to those of you that, you know, grabbed your, you, you know, you, 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 you plate of food, your popcorn, got yourself some drinks, you know what I'm saying? Whatever your vice is and you watch this thing in its entirety. You know what I'm saying? Mad love for y'all, man. Mad love for y'all. All right, so this, ladies and gentlemen, is the one plus 12 scrutinized pristine style if you like this video you already know hit that thumbs up button be sure to like share and subscribe to expose yourself to tons of videos that i've done like this one keep it locked at pristine mobile tech hit that notification bell down below in the comment section um so that you'll get notified whenever my videos drop you know and when they drop you know be one of the first to check out the content i'm always chilling in the comment section um so you know hit me with any questions comments feedback of any kind all I ask is that we have respectful text, uh, tech conversations in the comment section. You know, I don't deal with disrespect and name calling and arguing back and forth. I respect it. I respect your opinions. And I just ask that you guys respect mine. And that's it. Nice and simple. Right. Nice and simple. All right. So, again, keep it locked. You know, pristine review is going to be coming soon after I get some real world testing, you know what I'm saying, from both of these devices. You know, I'm going to have full pristine reviews for both camera reviews, for both comparison videos, for both, uh, you know, with a slew of other stuff that's happening as well. On top of just flooding, you know, YouTube with my videos from 2023 that I wasn't able to finish. Got a lot of projects from 2023 that I need to finish and upload as well. So got a lot coming. So keep it locked. Tune in, subscribe to make sure, make sure you guys are up on whatever pristine is doing all right appreciate y'all i love you guys and you already know please stay safe get spiritually fit keep it pristine in every aspect of your lives happy new year to y'all it's 2024 man let's get it peace